These two rainbow trout are the same age and were raised in the same tank, but the larger one has been genetically modified. Professor Terry Bradley leads the research at the University of Rhode Island. You can see this enhanced muscling in it, and these are the parent stock. The other fish on the bottom, you can see where it doesn't have that increased muscle mass in it. So we know that these fish have somewhere around 20% more muscle mass than the standard fish does. The process starts in this laboratory. Over the last four years, Dr. Bradley has injected 20,000 rainbow trout eggs with a DNA variation which inhibits a protein that restricts muscle growth. Each one of these is an egg and the micro pump is set up to deliver five nanoliters of DNA which you can't see. We put dye in it and all you see is this tiny little dot inside the egg of, of green food coloring. That's the only way that you know it's been injected. In a normal sized trout, a genetically controlled protein called myostatin keeps the fish from growing beyond a certain size. Dr. Bradley's research shows that altering the gene that produces myostatin seems to result in more muscle mass. We inject them into the egg so each egg gets injected with a little bit of DNA and if you're very lucky, a little piece of that DNA is incorporated into the genome of the developing embryo, and that develops into a fish. Once the eggs hatch, they start their journey through a series of tanks in this aquaculture research facility. But from all the thousands of injected eggs, only 300 fish so far have carried the modified gene. The research will continue for a few more years before a larger and more efficiently growing rainbow trout can move on to the commercial markets. Bradley says the final goal is to increase the overall efficiency of aquaculture. For example, where typically it might take 1.2 kilograms of feed to produce one kilogram of fish, we'd hope that by inhibiting myostat perhaps we might be able to get to the point where one kilogram of feed would produce one kilogram of fish. Professor Bradley's study has been funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Mark Mirando is with the department's National Institute of Food and Agriculture. The purpose of understanding muscle growth would be several fold. Okay? The first would be to produce that muscle in a more efficient and more sustainable manner. That is to produce more meat for consumption with less input of resources, less energy input, less feed input, less labor input. And perhaps, he says, with better taste or more nutrients. Worldwide, the fish most commonly produced through aquaculture are catfish and tilapia, both freshwater species. But salmonid species like salmon and trout are rapidly becoming more popular in the industry. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says the value of aquaculture production rose to nearly $1 billion in the U.S. over the past 20 years, mostly due to growing demand for fish in general and harvesting restrictions on wild fish. Mirando says the rapid growth of aquaculture is linked to population growth. The demand for seafood in the United States and worldwide is rapidly increasing but the ability of the oceans to supply that, uh, that food even at the current levels, disregarding population increases and increases in demand, the ability of the oceans to supply that is diminishing. Mirando dismisses concerns about genetic modifications, pointing out that humans have already genetically modified many plants and animals through centuries of selective breeding. The most common examples, he says, are dogs, which range in size from chihuahuas to Great Danes. For producer Salima Palacio, I'm Francis Alonso, VOA News.